Can you hear me? My microphone is unmuted, so even if you are not using voice over IP, you should be able to hear me. In the chat area and let me know if you are hearing me, please. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Show that it's transmitting. Thing, even better if you could hear me. Testing, testing. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I do recommend, uh, and I'm saying this in the hopes that you're hearing me, that if you do use voice over IP that you use a headset. We almost always have somebody who tries to use voice over IP and does not contain their sound. So what happens is their microphone picks up what their speakers are doing and it generates a, a very loud feedback to everybody. So you can participate sound wise is if you have a headset. Otherwise, all you can do is listen. I see someone listed as participant one. If possible, could I ask you to please update that and put your name on there? Also, Ricky and Tracy, if I could get you to put a little bit more information about yourselves, like a last name, that would be helpful. Thank you. Welcome, Hawaii.
I hope everyone is seeing and hearing me. You are, and uh, you can hear what I'm saying. Please type into the chat box uh, with a response so I know that you are successfully hearing me. Okay, uh, let me turn my microphone up a little bit. It's a little higher. How about that? Does that sound better? Updated your name, Mr. Alston. Uh, participant one, okay, if the sound is going in and out, it may be a product of your browser or your bandwidth. I'm actually using a studio microphone here, so, um, and, and it's very quiet. Grandkids are all upstairs, so. Does it sound a little uh, louder now? Okay. Make sure that you have your volume set to its highest level. That's number one. Also, uh, it might be helpful if you have a number of browser windows open to shut down all except the most essential ones. Sometimes people have six, seven, eight browser windows open, and it really does lot of your computer's resources. So see if that might help. Well, normally, uh, and I'm just uh, sharing in case others are arriving and they're just running a little late, uh, normally we do try and get started within the first couple minutes. That's not possible. And at the beginning of a semester, it's we always have some challenges. So this is not um, out of the ordinary. So don't feel like there's any frustration or anything about getting connected. The most important thing is that you're able to get connected, you're able to hear and see appropriately, and additionally, if you have the capability with a webcam and a headset to share uh, your own video and your own audio, none of those are necessary. Okay, we have Dean Thomas who has just joined. If you don't yet see it, there's a box called Participants, and you can click on that box and it will show the people as they join. So far, I am the only one in voice over IP.
There's Evangelist Eskridge. Dr. Oliver, excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm talking to help you to set your volume correctly. And um, if you would like to follow the instructions on the screen and share your webcam view, that's fine. Not necessary, but it would be helpful. Also, if you have a headset or earbuds, you can also use voice over IP so that you can speak and we can hear you. However, and I, I have to warn everyone about this, if you are using voice over IP and you do not have a headset or earbuds, your speaker will generate the sound from you speaking and it will actually generate a feedback loop and cause problems with the audio in the conference. If you have earbuds, that's excellent. If not, that's fine too. I just hope you can all hear me. Good evening, Evangelist Eskridge. How are you? Uh-oh, I'm not hearing you. Good evening, Dean Thomas. I do hear you. I'm doing well. So um, we're trying to generate a little bit of conversation so everyone can make sure that their audio is set correctly and they can hear us all. Uh, so you do like the way I worked um, chapters one and nine. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm finishing that up for you. Well, it's my pleasure. Okay, let's see who we have. Evangelist Eskridge, I can see you, I just can't hear you. I don't know exactly why. And I do believe that, oh, I just heard a click. Nope. Okay. I do believe um, Dr. Wells will be on this evening as well. Uh, I see a new arrival uh, with the name on the screen of Alan. If you would please uh, either uh, update your name with a first and last or uh, type in the chat area uh, your name, and I can update it for you. That's a nice background, Dean Thomas. I like that. Oh, now I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. I still don't hear you. Oh. I can hear someone on the audio who who just uh, joined. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Excellent. Welcome. Um, if you have a webcam and are interested in sharing your webcam, 
there's an area in your team viewer control panel called my video if you click on it it should bring up a little um, preview window and right in the center of it should be a circle with a, an arrow that says share my video or share video if you click on that you Okay. Yep. I just joined the group. Yes, good evening, sir. I just updated your name. Thank you. Do you see the change? Um, it just disappeared. Let me see if I can bring it back. In, uh, where it says participants almost everything in team viewer is in a drop down if you click on it it'll open it up if you click on it again it'll close it okay just to I be able it. to conserve space box just popped up okay and um, see the participants I see you and okay. one other it's Dean Thomas and I don't know why she's having audio issues because I did hear her before. <coughs> uh, Dr. Oliver, the uh, UCAM on the screen uh, indicates that uh, you have a particular piece of software that needs to be started because it says, please start your CAM, I think is what it says. So you may or may not have your uh, webcam started. Dean Thomas, I'm still not hearing you. I see you trying. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, 12 minutes after 9 uh, Eastern Time. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, thank you, Elder Elam. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, and I'm certain we'll talk or, or email later. So first things first, uh, let's get started with a word of prayer, and then we will begin this session. I do believe Dr. Wells will be joining us. Uh, she did not tell me otherwise, so I anticipate she will be here shortly. So if you please join me uh, for a moment of prayer. <clears throat> oh God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every blessing and challenge that you give us. Lord, help us to remember that we're here not just for ourselves, but for the other souls that you would have to be brought to an awareness of you. Lord, help us to be that light. Help us to be that city set upon a hill for those who wish to know what they must do to be saved. Lord, help us to be good, honest, loving, and caring examples of your love in this world. Lord, this evening over our session, we ask you to uh, give us your graces. Bless all of those who are on their way and still have not made it, that they may be able to be successful. And Lord, I rebuke the spirits of the demons who would come in and distract and insert technical difficulties right now in the name of Jesus. You get the glory in all that we do. You get the honor and you get the praise. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, Sister Bobby. I see you. I don't hear you yet. Nope, I'm still not hearing you. So I'm, I'm sure you'll work on it and keep working on it. Same with uh, Dean Thomas. I'm, I'm not hearing you yet. Can you oh, hear me now? Oh. Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, and just so everybody knows, when you're in Team Viewer, either as the uh, meeting organizer or the meeting participant, by default, when you bring up the VoiceOver IP section, 
the microphone is muted. You must physically go in and unmute your microphone every session when you begin. And this is something that you'll have to teach your students as well. You have to remind them that they have to turn their own microphone on when they connect. So that being said, let's do a little bit of um, keeping here. Um, first things first, uh, let me introduce myself to those who have not met me before. I'm Elder Scotty Ward, and I am the uh, your instructor for the Train the Trainer course. Uh, this course was put together uh, based on my understanding of the needs of the CHMJI instructors in order to be most effective when they teach online. I am the administrator for the CHMJI Moodle. Dr. Oliver, I see you. Um, I am the administrator for the Moodle, which is hosted by my church, New Community Church of God in Christ in Waldorf, Maryland. We are members of the uh, Greater Maryland First Jurisdiction. Bishop Joel Harley Lyles, Jr. is our jurisdictional prelate. And my pastor is Superintendent Willie R. Hutt. So that being said, uh, oh, hi, Elder Elam. I see you too as well. Excellent. We have six people. I realize there may be some um, audio issues and there may be some video issues. That's all to be expected at the beginning of a session before people are familiar with the tool. Um, I need to let somebody know that you're listening to us over your speakers and I can hear it. Um, the good news is it's not very loud. The bad news is it's So be careful about that. If if you start hearing yourself, hearing yourself, hearing yourself, then you have generated the loop, and you need to mute your microphone as quickly as possible. Um, otherwise, please just keep your speakers. Yes, I do, Dean Thomas. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, excellent. So, for those uh, new people who are joining us, first off, uh, welcome. Uh, it's great to have you here. I do have so far two returning instructors, uh, both of whom are in the process of teaching online classes themselves, but they have come back to uh, provide some support and feedback and and maybe learn a little bit more um, during their period of time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sister Bobby, that's uh, Missionary Bobby Iwobi. Uh, Sister Bobby, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Sister Bobby Iwobi. I'm the Dean of Education for Indiana's second jurisdiction. Uh, Sanders is my bishop, and Mother Carolyn Anderson is my supervisor. This is my third going on fourth year with Elder Ward, and I'm still learning. To all you know, you have a lot to learn, and just if I can learn it, anybody can learn. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Um, Dean Thomas, uh, we see her chair. She needs to step away from her. Uh, Dean Thomas is the other returning instructor. Uh, we do have Evangelist Eskridge on. Uh, she was present last semester, but she's uh, coming back this semester to help make sure that she is uh, uh, fully trained. So uh, we're going to be working with her as well. Dean Inez Thomas is from, um, oh gosh, Georgia, and I'm not certain what jurisdiction she's part of. But her husband is Bishop John Thomas, the new jurisdictional prelate. And that's about all I know about her. Um, Elder Ward, Stacey Austin has written something. 
Oh, um, she's saying, is the audio supposed to be like this the entire time? It, it all depends upon what you're hearing. If you're hearing me speak and then the echo, that's because someone has me on their speakers instead of a headset. Um, what they can do to help, whoever it is that's listening to me through speakers, it can help if you would please mute your microphone until you're ready to speak. You don't hear, yeah, mute your microphone. In the voice over IP box on the left-hand side is microphone. It was, you have successfully done that. And now Superintendent Chappelle has joined yeah, us. Yeah. Um, I I don't hear you yet, sir. How are you? Oh, there you are. Excellent. Great to have you. Good to be here. Okay, um, Sister Alston. Uh, just so you know that um, what you heard is very very common, and so it is. Number one, you're going to learn how to do this, but number two, you're going to learn to speak to your students so that they do it as well. You have to teach them about that feedback loop uh, so that those aren't rolling around in the conversation. For anyone who does not have a headset or earbuds, and earbuds will work if you can plug them into your computer. If you get them from your cell phone, uh, they can work in your computer. Um, anything that will keep the sound from going back into your microphone uh, is what we need. Very helpful. Um, Dean Thomas, are you still hearing us? I don't know. I see you. I see you fine. Okay, well, um, click on videos. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh-oh. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Dean, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Excellent, thank you. And how uh, many semesters have you been here with us? <laughs> okay, numerous semesters. Excellent, that's great. Good to have you. Superintendent Chappelle, would you please introduce yourself to the uh, our new instructors? Certainly. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. My name is Cliff Chappelle. I'm the pastor of the St. John's All Nations Church of God in Christ in Portland, Oregon. I actually live in Vancouver, Washington. Um, I am um, a part of the Oregon Northwest jurisdiction where my prelate is Bishop H.B. Daniels, Jr. Um, and I have been involved with the, uh, well, I'm the, um, our local site jurisdictional dean, and I've been working with um, Elder Scotty Ward with this online program for now about, uh, I believe, going on two years. <laughs> I teach the homiletics um, online class. Excellent. Thank you. Now, um, also, I guess I am the district superintendent of the Love District for <laughs> um, Oregon North. That. That's right. That's okay. I had forgotten it as well. So thank you. I forgot the district discussion. Yeah. So um, if you would please, and uh, just so everybody knows, 
this is designed for not only protocol, but also to teach you a little bit about the tool. So don't feel bad if you can't respond or if your microphone is setting correctly. That's part of the learning process. So if you would please, Dr. Oliver, would you uh, introduce yourself? I'm sorry, sir. I believe your microphone is muted. Yes, sir. His. Sister Bobby, uh, your voice is a little fuzzy. I'm not sure exactly why. I was just saying I used some of uh, Bishop Cole's material in teaching. Oh, church administration? Uh, uh, yes, and uh, also when I teach effective leadership. Oh, well, excellent. Uh, Great. Um, Elder Smith, would you please introduce yourself? Um, we can't hear you. Your microphone may be muted. Okay, you should be able to hear me now. Yes, thank you. Okay. My name is Elder Alan Smith, Jr. I'm also from Indiana in the same jurisdiction of missionary, <laughs> there she go, Bobby Arobi. Uh, she's um, the jurisdictional um, dean for the state of number two. And I'm one of the local uh, instructors and deans for at least the Northwest Indiana, um, part of Indiana. And I've been teaching the CH Mason courses for approximately about three years, going on four. Um, starting up a new cohort, um, actually the next Saturday, um, looking to, matter of fact, with, uh, District Superintendent Chappelle, um, uh, going to probably audit his class, uh, so I would like to, um, go ahead and start teaching from my background. I, uh, actually a, um, a college professor and I teach, um, online and other type of courses, so, I uh, just want to um, be part of it and um, bring on um, new experiences to the students. Uh, my Super. bishop is Bishop uh, B.A. Sanders, and uh, my pastor is my father, um, Elder Superintendent Alan Smith, Sr. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, sir, we can. Wonderful. Okay, let's see if there's anybody else. Is anyone else on the voiceover IP who could speak and introduce themselves? Evangelist Eskridge. And I see Sister Alston. If not, that's fine. Okay. Uh, first off, uh, a few minutes ago, I mean, like, I believe about an hour ago, 
I sent out a link to everyone <clears throat> and asked you to, if you would, to check out this particular uh, and put an X in each of the areas that you have experience. Now I'm doing that um, X a little not proficient at all. Okay, um, uh, I'm doing this because it, it demonstrates a number of different things all at once. First off, it helps us to gauge uh, each, uh, I'm sorry, the collective experience of the instructors here. Uh, it helps us to understand areas where we have some strengths as well as areas that definitely will require significant amounts of teaching uh, in order for us to uh, fully uh, make sure everyone is uh, able to use them. This document in Google Drive and it allows up to 25 people to edit it at the exact same time and everyone can see everyone else's edits. So for example, uh, I see there are at least two other people, one, yeah, two other people that are viewing the document and they can actually see me if I'm, for example, if I'm typing more X's and they're watching, they can see it on their document as well. This uh, document or this uh, uh, tool is free of charge to anyone with a Gmail account. It's called Google Drive. And I use it a lot for things that I call icebreakers. In other words, a way for the students to start collaborating with themselves. And we'll learn a little bit about that as we go through the process. There is a great value, and in fact, it's um, very important as an online instructor that you help to enlist your students and become less of an instructor and more of a facilitator. Um, most all of the uh, information uh, indicates that that is the way the students are most productive, most effective, and um, retain the information the most and that is by collaborating among themselves as compared to the traditional I'm the instructor, I tell you the information, you recite the information back to me and ask questions. Uh, so if you would please uh, take uh, a few moments and it doesn't have to be now but if you would within the next day or so please put your X's in here for it, oops, somebody took my X's out Whoever is doing this, realize that those X's are mine. And if you're erasing my X's, I, I want to count the number of X's in these spaces. So uh, you can type your own X's and then we'll count the X's. X, I, sh I should be, have an X in every space because I have experience in all of these items. And add X's, yes. Thank you. That and uh, that would be helpful. Now, a uh, little bit more information. This course will be conducted over the course of the next few months, every Saturday evening, uh, with a couple possible exceptions. If there are, for example, workers' meetings, um, those typically trump um, classes. Uh, but have their workers meeting on the same week. So there will be periods of time where we'll have more instructors, periods of time where we will have fewer instructors, but my hope is that the continuity of multiple weeks of training uh, will allow you all enough, inf enough time to learn everything you need to to be effective online instructors. Uh, Sister Alston, I see it says you didn't receive the document. Uh, I sent a link to everyone that I have their email address for, so maybe I don't have your email. Uh, if you would please uh, either send it to me. Uh, my email is wardss, W-A-R-D-S, at newcommunity-cogic 
org. To me there, I will be certain to add you to the list. So let me start off by going through, and, and I'm just going to go through this quickly. Uh, we do try and stick to our schedule. Um, sorry about the sound. We have a bathroom right above me, and that's my grandparents preparing for me. So let's, okay, we still don't have Dr. Wells yet. Uh, this is our course outline that we will be following. Uh, I wish to point out that I do not follow a syllabus. I follow an outline. And the main reason for that is a lot of times we have to learn cyclically. In other words, there are certain periods of time where 80% of my students will have learned one particular thing, but one student has not yet. Well, it's incumbent on me to make sure that student learns that particular area. So I use a course outlined, and as we go through particular areas in the course, I'll be adding one of these little check marks at the end of each of these lines to indicate how far we've come. It is shared out on the internet, and everyone has read access or view access to this document at any time. So even if you miss me for a couple weeks, you can come and take a look at this and find out what we've covered by looking at the check marks. Uh, as we go through, uh, there are various areas that we're going to cover. I call them the modules. We have a Moodle introduction. We have the course document preparation and upload which is actually uh, very important. Uh, many times people have their full course their home jurisdiction or their home campus. And the question then becomes how best to move that into an online format. Um, the good news is many of the, I'm sorry? A question. Uh, the good news is many of our courses are already online, so it then becomes much easier for you to take a course that has been placed online and do a little bit of customization to make it yours. Uh, so that's helpful. Area is online teaching techniques. For those of you who have not taught in an online environment, it's different. Things are different, your students are different, their uh, span of attention is different, uh, the amount of work that you have to do as the direct instructor versus facilitator changes, the ratio of the time that you spend changes, etc. Teaching you about measurement tools within the Moodle and how to use them most effectively in your teaching. Those of you who are familiar with Blackboard or other online tools, uh, Moodle is very similar and does it uh, allows you to do automatic assessments and grading. What you have to do is go collect the grades. It's pretty neat. The next one is hardware and software related to online teaching that it takes a lot of, um, uh, takes a lot of software, et cetera, to teach online. You really have to be techie smart, and, and that's not always the case. I'm teaching from a laptop, and it's a three-year-old laptop at that. Uh, it is uh, conceivable that all of you have sufficient hardware in order to teach without any further purchases, with the possible exception of a headset, webcam, etc. All of those are sort of uh, required when we move toward you being the online instructor. Those will be required. Microphone, speakers, headsets, uh, arrangement, the logistics of your online in environment 
this is my teaching area and I can't use large gestures outside of the teaching area to any effect. So those are the sort of things that I will teach you when we uh, move through this course. In addition, there are a number of tools that you may or may not use as part of your own online instruction. I'll be teaching you about these tools, how to use them, where to get them, and the good news is nearly every single one is totally free. So my goal in all of this is to put as little financial burden on the instructors and the jurisdictions as possible. So I seek out and find the zero cost tools and then teach you how to use them. Now, uh, let me finish this up. I uh, have the zero cost tools is obviously for your own convenience, but what that creates is a bit of complexity. I, every semester I have instructors say, well, why don't we use Blackboard or why don't we use um, Adobe Connect or why don't we use WebEx or etc. And the main difference between the tools I teach and the suites that are available out there is cost. Absorb a you know $30 per month per instructor or per student uh, for some of these tools that are out there. It's just not possible. So there's a little bit more work that you have to do in order to meld these technical tools together because they come from various sources. Instead of a suite that you pay for and everything works within the suite such as Adobe Connect, we have voice over IP, we have um, webcam, we have online uh, uh, file viewing, facilitation, etc. And they typically come in a number of different tools that you need to learn to use together. That's why, number one, the good news is it's cost. Number two, it makes it a little more technically complex for you to use. And I will teach you how to be most effective with those. Modules that we will handle are practice instruction and peer review. Uh, when we reach near the end of the period of time where we will be teaching, everybody gets to be the teacher. It will be your students. So it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, it is never without issue. Uh, but the good news is that's when we need to go through those issues, experience them, and be able to get through them so that we can then tell our students how to do the same thing in a classroom environment when I'm not there with you. So we, we all learn together. Uh, work to deconflict any sort of class schedules. Make sure that we get enough information out so that we can do announcements of all of our available instruction. The better the better because frequently we have to a month or two in advance. When is the next time you know course A, B, or C will be offered? So we always try and get uh, your selection for your courses and an announcement uh, done well in advance of the next semester. Oh, uh, uh, Sister Alston, I see your request. It's here, I'll type it for you. By the way, does anybody have any questions or comments at the moment? I've been doing a lot of discussion all by myself. Um, okay, uh, I will share a little bit. Uh, one of the main things that we have is the instructors learning the technique necessary to teach in an online environment. It's not a physical thing, it's a psychological thing. They're not standing in front of a 
class and teaching textbook can't use their handouts in the same manner. Very limited uh, ability for gestures, etc. And all of those become important. Number one most difficult thing is to teach people to talk into a camera. My camera is here. My laptop is here. So I'm, I'm not even seeing the screen as I'm teaching to my camera. And that takes practice. There are a number of technical uh, issues, obviously, but I think the most difficult thing for the students to learn as they become online instructors are the techniques. Those help them become more effective. Everything else can be taught. Techniques have to be practiced. Does that answer your question, sir? OK. Anyone else? Yes, Elder Ward. Um, how do you send the um, the course attendance experience that checklist. How do you save it and send it? I do I have to sign in to Google to get into it? No, absolutely not. Uh, this uh, in uh, Drive can set a document to be shared, and in fact, I will click on it and show it to you. And then there are certain things that you can set. Right now, this says anyone who has the link to this document can edit the document. Sign in, or it shouldn't require a sign in. Okay, so basically just hit the share button. Uh, if you are in Google Drive, yes. At the, uh, click the share button and then set all of the share parameters. By default, it won't be this way. You have to set it so that anyone who has the link can edit the document. Now, uh, I need to let everybody know there is a, a risk to doing that. As this link, they could go in and totally obliterate this document. The good news is, this is not a, a URL that somebody's going to pick up rather easily. I do set, when I click on share, uh, you can't really tell based on this, but the document is not searchable. It's not included in internet searches. It is sub, uh, security only by obscurity. It is possible that somebody could randomly arrive at this URL and obliterate your document or take information and misuse it or whatever. So if you are doing this for your own Google Drive, this information that you have is subject to being destroyed without your knowledge. And we'll talk about that as we go, because I teach a lot from Google Drive, and I'll teach you how to use it. Helpful? So you hope that we received it. I'm sorry? I believe I sent it, so hopefully you received it. How do you send it? Oh, uh, I think I, I answered that. If you are sharing the document with your students, let's say we're sharing this document, you highlight this and copy it and then send it to them in email. Send them the link directly in email. Open it up. So. Dr. Ward, the facilitator, when they open it up, they'll see everybody's markings, right? That's correct. So I don't have to send it to you because that's what I look for. 
I'm the one that took it out of the exit. Oh, okay. <laughs> At first, because I thought it was just me and I was going to try to send it to you. And then when I got down to the bottom, there wasn't anything to send. So, um, you should have more than one X because I did mine. Yes, uh, I need people to do nothing except put exits on here. Right now, it looks like only I have put my X's in here. Okay, well, I've, yeah, I've done mine. I know I have. No, you're looking at my X's then. You need to add an X. Well, the word, when we put our X yes. in, it it will show it as an additional X. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And then we count the number of X's. Okay. So okay. if I put my X in. Yes, Sister Bobby, I can. They're, they're all. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Somebody put uh, Webcam Viewer, Google Drive, Anonymous Squirrel. So they use animal names for anonymous people in Google Drive. Anonymous Camel, Squirrel, etc. Sister Bobby, are you um, holding your microphone or something? We're getting a lot of what sounds like microphone rubbing. Okay. Yeah, Elder Smith, you are clicking on my screen. For example, I see you're clicking, but you're actually viewing my screen, so you cannot edit on my screen. You need to, I sent you the URL, and it, if you received it in email, you need to click on it and open it in your own browser window in order to update it. So uh, this was our, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sister Bobby. Anonymous squirrel. Yeah, I, I think you are. Um, just so everyone knows, whenever a student clicks on my screen, I see their name. So uh, you can actually use that as a feedback tool. Your students, and you say, uh, would everybody please click on, you know, these last two items, and I will see that you have clicked on them. It's actually a feedback tool built into, yes, Sister Bobby, I just saw yours. It's a feedback tool built into TeamViewer. Superintendent Chappelle, I see yours. Yes. Uh, TeamViewer is a great tool for those of you who are not familiar with it. This is quickly becoming the tool of choice for our online instructors. If you are unfamiliar with the tool, it is a highly advanced support tool. It allows, like you see, the scheduling of meetings, the conducting of screen shares, use of voice over IP and video sharing. This is a remote control tool. If you ever do any long distance support for your family members, like I do, um, you can use TeamViewer free for personal, non professional, non commercial use, like it says here. It's for non commercial use. License it commercially, I believe it's $750 per license. Great tool, I'm not going to pay for it. Oh, we have that document. Let me uh, also point out the period of time that we have. And generally speaking, how it will progress. For each of the modules that I showed you in the course outline, 
laid out chronological. And I use this little race car driver here to indicate how close we are to the finish line, which would be the period of time where you are teaching. You're in February, getting started. Spend our first few weeks with Moodle introduction and course document preparation and upload. We don't even have to worry about anything else right now. So that's how we plan to conduct the, the course. Let's see if we have any other arrivals. Still anticipate Dr. Wells will be here. Uh, by the way, um, Dr. Oliver, could I get you to mute your microphone? Unless you're speaking, if you have something to say. My, my voice twice. And it's enough to hear me once. Uh, in addition, and sort of as a uh, one of the final things that I wished to cover this evening, I have an area that I call Train the Trainer within Google Drive, and I share it for everyone to be able to see. Um, the, a lot of what we do uh, revolves around a collaborative experience if the students are available, but if they're not, there is a lot of information in here that you can look at at any time and get an idea of what we need to cover or where we're going, etc. So don't feel like it's a bad idea to come in here and look at things. I will share this URL as well for everyone at some point. Yeah, let's go look at the Moodle. Forgot about that. I don't know how I forgot, but I did. Overlooked it. There we go. Okay, for those of you who are not familiar with it, this is a learning management or course management system called Moodle. For our teaching, online for CHMJI. The Moodle is hosted by my church and I am the Moodle administrator, although if anyone else has Moodle administration experience, I'd love to have you. This is basically how we arrange it. Your students will come here, you can teach from here, uh, and this is where all of the course material is kept online. Rather quickly, as you see, certain areas are grayed out the reason is that because I am an administrator, I see everything, whether it's set to visible or not. So there are lots of links and down at the bottom, lots of pages, Moodle spaces, that you'll see when you're watching me, but are not viewable for you when you go there. Moodle, it is www.newcommunity-kojic.org slash Moodle. In order to get any farther than this screen, it requires an account. I do not allow guest access. I do not allow, you know, one day go in and take a look access. All of our courses are locked by login and password and role-based administration. Uh, your students or anyone who's interested can find a particular course and then click on the little summary button to the right of it and it will bring up a course summary that they can read. This is not uh, password protected, but if they click on the course itself, it will essentially ask them to log in. 
These are our spring 2014 courses that are available. And let me just grab one right off the top here. I'll click on Ministerial Ethics. And because I am an administrator, I have a, a, a few extra rights in here. But uh, this is the Ministerial Ethics course. And this is what the students will see and what they will be able to review and what the instructors will use to teach from in most cases during their course. Uh, if, as you can see, there's multimedia in there, there's uh, YouTube links, there's uh, graphics, uh, but there are also links. For example, here's the week five slide presentation. When the student or when the instructor clicks on it, Okay, I'm, I'm seeing your response, Sister Bobby, I'm sorry. When the instructor clicks on it, it's downloading. The can then, using their shared screen, each from their slide deck to their students. This is how the online instructors teach. This is in PowerPoint. Uh, we'll talk about the file formats and my recommendations. Uh, I do not recommend the use of PowerPoint as part of your slide decks. And we'll get into why and whether or not uh, you wish to use PowerPoint anyway. It's totally OK. It's your course. But there are uh, links. For example, here's a web link. A, just a page that they've typed. So there are a number of different um, ways to use the Moodle. Uh, I will quickly cover, and I'm going to go to one that I know, go to CHMJI, back up to the top, and then down to our question bank practice. In Moodle, when you're an administrator, you have access to this area here on the left called Administration. And you can click on Questions, and it will allow the use of a question bank. To about how to use a question bank, how best to use it for, for quizzes, midterms, final exams, etc. And each one of these is a question that I will just click on it. Uh, let's say this is a uh, matching question. Click on it to view it. And this is the way the students will view the question when it's included in a quiz or exam. I'll teach you about the verbiage to put into it. I'll teach you about how to use, for example, this is a matching with a number of areas on the right, a number of areas on the left. They choose whatever. And when they're all done, they can, well, I'm going to submit it in advance so we can see it. But it actually grades it. It says, I got one out of six correct. You can see that as well. You can set it to provide instant feedback. Grades the moment they finish their court, their tests. So Moodle's a very nice, powerful piece of software. And the price is right. It's open source. Questions on Moodle? Comments? A very good question. Thank you. Uh, if you pass the certification exam, you will be certified as an instructor. 
instructor certifications include the ability to edit and create a Moodle instruction space. They do not teach you how to administer the Moodle itself. Just a course within. Is that what you were asking? Uh, I do not have the capability to teach someone to a to a level of expertise I would consider to be certifi certifiable. Learned in Moodle, I've learned myself by going to Moodle.org YouTube videos. So I don't have the capability to teach you any more than basically what I sh what I demonstrate in here, but there's so much more to learn. Uh, oh, Sister Alston, who creates the quizzes and the tests? The answer is that every course, uh, every course, for example, I'll go into Kojic History, and down to the left, click on Questions. There's a question bank that is loaded full of questions that were put there by the instructors who are currently teaching this course. It's, uh, we'll teach about that, but I will teach you how to create questions, also how to use questions that are already there, and some best practices for the questions because you're actually going to be using the Moodle at the same time the other instructors are as well. This is for that to make sure that you're not asking the same question two different ways. So you can create your own quizzes and tests. Any, any course that you see that is already up on the Moodle has already got a question bank created by the uh, instructor who is teaching that course. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see. Upside down. Well, upside down. Um, Panel. I'm looking. Wow. Yes. So, why don't you come down and join us? Yeah. I don't either. Um, everyone, I'd like to, <laughs> yeah, but it may be built into the laptop, though. I'd like to introduce Dr. Cody uh, Franks Wells. So. <laughs> At least you're here. Uh, well, we have a number of uh, new people online. If you click in the participants area, Dr. Wells, uh, for example, uh, Evangelist Eskridge is on, and I'm certain she's listening, but we don't see her video, and I have not been able to hear her. Okay. I think over in the corner down at the bottom is uh, Elder Elam. And on his, uh, to, um, Zelda Smith from, uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, Sister Bobby, just to uh, point this out, everyone's view may be a little bit different. Uh, so if you say, you know, the third one over from the right, it may not be the same third over from the right for everybody. Oh, okay. It's a lot of factors, including their own screen resolution. So, oh, all right. And when you get into Big Blue Button, it's, you know, that is anybody's business. Big Blue Button uh, does not have any format similar to what we're seeing here in TeamViewer. You just get people all over the place. So, uh, Dr. Wells, we also have a Tracy Alston on. We have uh, Elam, okay. Uh, we have Elder Smith, we have Dr. Oliver, and Evangelist Eskridge, who, again, I'm certain she's hearing us, uh, but uh, we have not been able to hear or see her. So we've been covering a number of things about the course. We've been covering about the Moodle and a little bit about techniques. We also spent time introducing each other to the group. Uh, Dr. Wells, did you have any sort of uh, CHMJI specific overall information to pass on? Okay. Right. Oh, yes. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't know me, one thing I did not point out is I am not a jurisdictional dean, and in fact, I'm not even a campus dean. My pastor is our campus dean, and I am the campus director for our church. But uh, a number of years ago, when we were starting the campus and my pastor uh, brought us into the office, he said, I want you to make this an example. This needs to be echoes in ministry. So along with all of our classrooms at New Community, which have Wi-Fi, which have flat panel televisions, which have whiteboards, which have podiums, uh, and which have new uh, chairs and tables. Our um, classes also, I thought, to incorporate an online element to that. And that's how the Moodle began on campus. But then I soon realized that it was far more capable than that. And that's when I gave Dr. Wells a call and said, you know, <laughs> we could really work together on this and make this bigger uh, and so that everyone can benefit. Um, and I think that we are achieving that right now. Uh, there are areas of the country that are underserved by their current capabilities within their jurisdictional institutes. There are also students who have a desire to learn more but don't have the capability to attend classes. Uh, a few of the examples uh, that I know of are uh, students who have a uh, parent 
or a child that they cannot leave. Be housebound, uh, and so as a result, we're able to get to them and teach them so that they can enjoy the same formational training as people who go to a classroom. We've had numerous queries from numerous areas of the country about this, but obviously more can be um, done to help get the word out. So if you have thoughts or ideas about how we can help increase our footprint from a public relations standpoint, we're more than happy to hear any information you have because there's a, there's great benefit in this. The big challenge we have is getting the word out to people who might need us. So let's see, what else do I have? I have about 15 minutes left and I'm trying to, oh, I know what I'll do. I'm going to, by the way, we are hearing somebody's phone ringing. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to do a, a short, let's see if I can find it, on security. As we are doing this, it's important to note that we are uh, online, and at, as we are online, there are some specific challenges to this. So let me go through this. This is the course or the uh, slide presentation I used at our last Holy Convocation. It's uh, and will help answer some questions for everyone. Uh, it's important for us to remember that just like we are, just like we do when we go out into the world in an evangelistic outreach or uh, we are placed into a, let's say, a high crime area within a community, etc. We have to be aware that security is necessary. Yes, we can pray over the door locks as we leave, uh, but we also need to make sure that the door locks are secure. Sent forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And I think you all are aware of that. Now, in terms of online security, let me back this off to make sure you're all seeing the whole screen. Most online unauthorized access to bad passwords on the part of the people who have accounts. Login and password are always the first place someone goes when they try and hack into an account. Passwords are either short or guessable or Same password for multiple accounts frequently. Why? There's just so many accounts they have to do. One for your bank, one for your uh, credit union, one for your school, one for your office, one, uh, multiples for your office, uh, etc. And it adds up. Personal email, next thing you know, you're carrying around 12 passwords. Sometimes people try and use the same password for multiple accounts. I'll admit I did the same until just recently. They all have passwords. Uh, true story, I was working in the Pentagon supporting a particular organization and we decided to a number of years ago and institute a new password change policy. Find who had their password the longest and one individual had kept the same password for seven years on a Department of Defense in uh, in the Pentagon. So it does happen. Seven years did not change their password. Top 25 passwords in 2012. If you have anything similar to that, please go change it immediately. Just there are uh, a lot of people follow, and they are guessable by crooks. 
So some of my password suggestions are long is strong. The longer your password, the more difficult it is, generally speaking, the more difficult it is to be hacked. Make sure there's nothing associated with you, your pet, your family, your favorite football team, your favorite basketball team. You know, Go Gators only works so many times before somebody catches on. Number three, combinations of words. I will give you some examples of what I use uh, or what I have used in the past extremely effective by combining words together. Most of the time when somebody goes in and tries to crack into your passwords, they use and they use a dictionary, a, a dictionary just made of words that they try and hurl against your account by putting two words together, though that's no longer in the dictionary. And the dictionary won't work anymore. The dictionary hack won't work. In two words. Substitution is helpful as well. Your one and your exclamation point look similar. Your three look similar. And yet they insert enough variety that it makes it more difficult to do the past. Song titles or phrases. A number of years ago, one of my uh, passwords that I used talked about a one-eyed purple people eater. Whatever works for you, phrases work. One e, one h f p p e. Now, admittedly, I did more with it, but that's the one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. Uh, use what you can. Also, uh, it talks about multi-factor authentication, and I'll describe that very quickly. Authentication uses not only your login and password, but it uses something else. For example, when I log in for my Gmail or Google Drive, a text to my phone that gives me a confirmation and required to put into my browser in order to log in. Convenient, but adds what's called another factor. Multiple factors are always good. If you can use it, please do. Who and uh, Google both allow multi-factor authentication. I'm not certain about Microsoft. I presume it does. In fact, it's on three different things, what a person is, what a person has, or what a person knows. Who are is personal recognition. For example, biometrics are part of what the person is. But you know, you remember your login, you remember your password. Your ATM card is what you have. The pin with it, two factors what you have and what you know. Just a little bit of information, identity theft affects over 10 million people each year. 12, there was a 70% in government document and benefit fraud complaints. So this is only getting worse and you need to protect yourselves. Caution in what you do, make sure that you have good passwords, and don't wait for an issue to occur before you're trying to fix it. I heard, but I heard the average cost to a consumer for a, uh, if somebody steals your roughly $1,800, even after your credit card companies uh, have taken off all of the fraudulent credit uh, that people have used, etc. It's still the average $1,800 per person of personal loss. So please exercise care. Um, any questions, comments? 
does that mean that I'll wait until I'm sorry, Sister Bobby, say that again. That this doesn't have anything to do with the lesson that we've done. But I do have a question I need to ask. Okay. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um Elder Elam, I got his email. Uh I'm gonna be teaching and I would like for him maybe to sit in on the class. Does he have to have the password and the login in order to you know? Um, to sit in on your class? Yes. The intro to church administration, if he were to have a Moodle account with a login and password, okay. he, could, he could be just like the students, or I could give him an auditing instructor role. I haven't talked with him about it, but... Um... I did just through the chat uh, get his email address and a okay. possibility. Just so everybody knows, uh, as we do this, uh, let's see, I've got uh, introduction two. to church down. I've gotten your student names. Oh, so okay. There's no, there's no one in there. Let me look at, I think, uh, New Testament okay. survey. I've gotten student information. Uh, just so everybody knows, we use what's called role-based administration in the Moodle. So as we look at it, we're assigned as instructors, the, uh, Dr. Bell and Elder Bell. And there are four people who are assigned as students. The good news about the Moodle is just because you have administrative rights, let's say um, Elder Bell here, is a teacher and has administrative rights within the New Testament Survey Moodle have the same settings in another Moodle. We'll look at Kojic history and I look at the roles. If he is not listed here as an instructor, he has no access, no rights, and cannot even access this Moodle. So the good news is this allows someone who is an instructor in one space to even act as a student in another and have no elevated privileges. All that you are assigned is based Moodle by Moodle by Moodle, Moodle space. So that's good. You can be a student and an instructor at the exact same time in two different Moodles. And oh, by the way, if you are None of those, even with a Moodle account, you will not be able to access these courses. Even if you have a Moodle account, we have a couple, um, well, let me just take a look. I've got 130 people registered here. We do not have 130 students. So of these people, uh, if they are not listed, if I have not placed them into a particular Moodle as a student or an instructor, they do not have access to those spaces. They have Moodle accounts. So, um, Sister Alston, how much is the course? Uh, it, the If you're talking about attending a course as a student, the fees apply as placed by the jurisdiction teaching it. Dr. Wells teaches in uh, Greater North Carolina jurisdiction. Um, the Bells teach in Greater Maryland First jurisdiction, and there may be a, a difference in fees. Uh, if you are here learning and you're affiliated with CHFDI, you're learning this course here that I teach, well, the good news is it's provided free of charge to CHMJI affiliate jurisdictions. Okay, Elder Smith, you need to audit homiletics. Uh, it would be helpful for you to contact Superintendent Chappelle. Find uh, the next time that he'll be teaching it, or whether you two can go through a um, semester without students, because right now I do not believe any student. I've had an inquiry, but not a registration. 
Superintendent Chappelle is your point man for the homiletics course. And we'll learn a little bit about that as we go. Uh, we have what are called lead instructors for all of the courses that are online. The lead instructor is basically the first instructor who brought the course online and who, by virtue of the fact that they were first, has the most experience with that course in an online format in this Moodle. So I've, I've nicknamed them the lead instructor. In order to teach within a particular space, let's say ministerial ethics, you need approval by the lead instructor who teaches ministerial ethics. Not be the person who decides whether or not you're ready to go for that particular course. I will teach you all the tools and techniques you need in order to be effective, but the actual application of that within the Moodle is the, respons the responsibility of the lead instructor. So, any more questions? We finish. We're we're about done this evening. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us this evening. This has been a lot of fun. It's great always to have new students. Uh, I do appreciate the the returning students and those who are here helping us, even if they're upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a first. That's a first. I do not know why that's doing that. Have your grandchildren visited you lately? Okay. When I go and come back, it's my nieces and nephew, and I know they've done something, and I can't get back. It's them. I can't get back to where I was. Also, it. Well, it may be a product of your ManyCam if you're using it. You might check your ManyCam software. Okay. All right. Um, so, Sister Alston, you asked, do we get a certificate at the end of the training? The answer is yes, if you pass the final exam education exam is a well the last the last one I gave was about 20 20 or 25 questions and they were uh, not graded by Moodle in other words I graded them by hand because uh, I asked a, a number of things and I wanted you to not only uh, answer them but sort of describe them um, for those who have reached the certification uh, Sister Bobby, Dr. Wells, um, what do you think of the certification exam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a regard just all the information. Okay, Sister Bobby, I think you're dropping out. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I said it's, uh, it's not a regurgitation of what you taught us, but it is a review of all the information and how we have assimilated. Yeah. Yeah. So, just so everybody knows, there are different ways to take an exam and there are different ways to give an exam. We'll talk about those and the strategy behind them uh, as we go through this course as well. There are certain times where you want to do things one way and they're not applicable in other at other times. So we'll learn that as well. The best, uh, or at least what I would consider to be best practices uh, for use within your particular teaching environment. That being said, we are uh, over our time now, and uh, I think we are all done. If anybody has any questions or comments, 
uh, please feel free to drop them in email to me. Uh, I will be happy to respond. Just so you know, if you ask me a question that has applicability to the whole group, what I will typically do, because if you asked it, there's a high likelihood someone else has the exact same question. What I will do is I will anonymize your question group with the answer. So it's not like I'm trying to turn it around on you or not answer you directly. If you ask a question, it's quite possible that somebody else has that same question as well. And I just don't want to have to answer it two or three times. So you'll, if you ask me a question and it, suddenly it ends up in your inbox sent to the whole group, it will not have your name on it. I won't say, oh, Sister Bobby asked me no, I'm, I will just say a student asked, and this is the answer, so that everyone benefits from the question. Oh, thank you, Evangelist Eskridge. Uh, again, I, I'm sorry that or see you. Beginning. That her there? No. Oh yeah, we see her. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. What else before we finish? Very good question. Uh, the answer is no. All of these courses do have textbooks that are included with them. And for example, the homiletics course uses Bishop Hogan's uh, textbook, Preaching Principles and Practices. We teach from this textbook. And the information for the slide decks or handouts or whatever are included in the Moodle. So the students will be expected to get their own textbooks as well. In some jurisdictions, they will mail the textbooks to the students. In other jurisdictions, they will give the students the option of buying their books on uh, Amazon or Books a Million or something like that. So it varies jurisdiction by jurisdiction. There are textbooks. For example, let me click on Ministerial Ethics. For example, and that is the stand, these are all um, approved texts by um, CHMJI National, so they are what our courses are built on. The syllabus comes from the textbook, and the textbook comes from the uh, approved textbook list that Dr. Wells maintains. Does that help, sir? Okay. I would like us, if we could, to finish out with a moment of prayer. Finish this out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Everybody, 
Have a great night. Thanks. Good night. Bye.